in paleoanthropology, out of Africa I is the first human in expansion into Eurasia, taking place between 1.8 and 0.8 million years ago. It is thought that Homo erectus developed a flexible adaptation to the open grounds, descending from the older Homo habilis lineage, which was strictly adapted to the dense woodlands. Such an adaptation would have allowed Homo erectus to leave Africa and expand its range into Eurasia. According to the recent African origin of modern humans hypothesis, the first human in expansion out of Africa is followed by the dispersal into Eurasia and replacement of these previous humanins by anatomically modern humans, starting about 100,000 years ago. Without further specification, out of Africa is usually held to mean out of Africa too, the expansion of modern humans into Eurasia. Movements out of Africa by early humanins seem to have occurred in at least three waves. Primitive chopper producers were first out by C. 1.8 Ma, followed by early Acheulean industries C. 1.4 Ma, and various cleaver producing Acheulean groups around 0.8 Ma. Until the early 1980s, Huminins were assumed to have been restricted to the African continent for the whole of the early Pleistocene, and so much archaeological effort has disproportionately focused on Africa. Compounded with Huminins probably being rare out of East Africa in the early Pleistocene, we are left with a sequence of events broken in space and time. Sites, Huminin sites are oldest in East Africa. The earliest evidence for retouched tools is from Cardigona, Ethiopia, and dates back to 2.6 a Euro 2.5 Ma in the very early Pleistocene. They might be the product of Australopithecus Garial Paranthropus Aethiopicus, the two known Huminins contemporary with the tools. Homo habilis is the first member of the Homo line and could have descended from the Australopithecus as early as 2.3 Ma. It is first attested in Lake Dekana, Kenya. Homo erectus seems to appear later, its earliest remains dating back to c. 1.9 Euro 1.6 Ma at Kubifora, Kenya. The two species would have lived face to face in East Africa for nearly half a million years. Well before Homo habilis disappeared. Homo erectus had made it into Eurasia. The earliest well-dated Eurasian site is that of Dmanisi in Georgia, and is securely dated to 1.81 Ma. There, some evidence of caring for the old was found. The skull of an old Homo erectus had lost all but one teeth years before his death, and is perhaps unlikely to have survived on his own. Early Pleistocene sites in North Africa, the geographical intermediate of East Africa and Georgia, are in poor stratigraphic context. The earliest of the dated is Ain Hanak in northern Algeria, an older and grey blair. It attests that early Huminins have crossed the northern African tracts, which are usually hot and dry. Huminins were part of the East African biome, and so a flux in climate could have momentarily expanded their environment, giving them the chance to move north. There is very little time between Homo erectus a Euro unregistered trademark apparent arrival in South Caucasus, and its probable arrival in East and Southeast Asia. There is evidence of Huminins in Yuan Mor, China, dating to 1.7 Ma and in Sornjiran, on Java, Indonesia, dating to 1.66 Ma. It appears Huminins took longer to move into Europe with the earliest site in Barranco Lee Cube Den in southeastern Spain dated to 1.4 Ma and a more controversial P. Renaud in southern Italy, allegedly from 1.3 Euro 1.7 Ma. In any case, by 1 Ma, Huminins had settled in most of the Old World. In Western Europe, it is hard to say, however, if settlement was continuous or if successive waves repopulated the territory in glacial interludes. Early Acheulean tools were present at Yor by DR by 1.4 Ma and it seems likely that successive waves out of Africa after then would have brought Acheulean technology to Western Europe, but hand axes, which are typical of the Acheulean industry, are absent in early Western European sites. Routes out of Africa, Sinai Peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula should be the African exit route par excellence, being since the Pliocene the only land bridge between the two continents of the Old World. As detailed below, unless we argue for boats on behalf of Homo erectus, it is surely the only way out. However, it was hard to access until the middle Pleistocene. The Nile followed a different and pitiful course. 
there are two Eurasian in triways that take advantage of the Sinai. First, the Levantine Corridor, which moves north along the eastern Mediterranean. Second, down the eastern bank of the Red Sea. Archaeological efforts in Arabia is limited, and attention is usually given to the Levantine Corridor. Due to the presence of Eurasian sites securely dated to the early Pleistocene, to reject the Sinai is effectively to affirm that early Huminins crossed straits, and this hypothesis has problems of its own. Babel Mand The Babel Mand is a 30 km strait parting East Africa from the Arabian Peninsula, with a small island, Perim, 3 km off the Arabian bank. The strait has a major appeal in the study of Eurasian expansion in that it brings East Africa in direct proximity with Eurasia. It do us near Euro unregistered trademark T require hopping from water body to the next across the North African desert. The land connection with Arabia has disappeared in the Pliocene, and though it may have reformed momentarily, the evaporation of the Red Sea and associated increase in salinity would have left traces in the fossil record after just 200 years and of aporite deposits after 600 years. Neither have been detected. A strong current flows from the Red Sea into the Indian Ocean and crossing would have been difficult without a land connection. Aldo and Grey tools are reported from Perim Island, implying that the strait could have been crossed in the early Pleistocene, though these finds have yet to be confirmed. Strait of Gibraltar The Strait of Gibraltar is the Atlantic entryway to the Mediterranean, where Spanish and Moroccan banks are only 14 km apart. A decrease in sea levels in the Pleistocene due to glaciation would not have brought this down to less than 10 km. Water treadmills at Gibraltar Deep currents push westwards, and surface water flows strongly back into the Mediterranean. The current would likely lose a swimmer or an unsteered raft. Entrance into Eurasia across the Strait of Gibraltar could explain the Huminin remains at Barranco Le Cube den in southeastern Spain dated to 1.4 Ma and Cima del Elefante in northern Spain dated to 1.2 Ma. But the site of Pira Nord in southern Italy, allegedly from 1.3 Euro 1.7 Ma, suggests a possible arrival from the east. Resolution is insufficient to settle the matter. Strait of Sicily the modern Strait of Sicily separates Tunisia and Sicily by 145 km, but is shallow and would have been much narrower in glacial maxima. We have a poor understanding of plate tectonics of this area for the greater part of the Pleistocene. But while plate tectonics could have made the strait narrower than predicted by the lowering of sea levels alone, contrast of Pleistocene fauna strongly argues against an actual land bridge. Since the strait is only 400 km away from the North African human in sight of Ain Hanik in Algeria, dating to 1.8 Ma or 1.2 Ma, it remains a plausible route for early Pleistocene expansion into Eurasia. But there is close to no evidence for an actual passing. Alleman based most of his argument in favor of such migration on Biancinia Euro unregistered trademark S discovery of Sicilian Aldo and Grey tools. But radiometric dates have not been produced, and the artifacts might as well be from the Middle Pleistocene. Crossing Straits, presence of human in remains in Indonesian islands is good evidence for seafaring by Homo erectus late in the early Pleistocene. Bednarik suggests that navigation had appeared by one ma, possibly to exploit offshore fishing grounds. He has reproduced a primitive dirigible raft to demonstrate the feasibility of faring across the Lombok Strait on such a device, which he believes to have been done before 850 ka. The strait has maintained a width of at least 20 km for the whole of the Pleistocene. Such an achievement by Homo erectus in the early Pleistocene offers some strength to the suggested water routes out of Africa, as the Gibraltar, Sicilian, and Babel manned exit routes are harder to consider if boats are deemed beyond the capacities of Homo erectus. It might be tempting to consider a one-off event getting a few hominins across a strait a Euro perhaps an Homo erectus family drifting on flood debris to land on a Eurasian bank. But successful population of Eurasia by such a beginning is unlikely. There are biological constraints to the minimum size a population must maintain to avoid extinction. That is to say, if less than 50 huminins at once made it into Eurasia and lost contact with African huminins, the population would likely undergo an extinction vortex, in part due to inbreeding. 
causes for human in dispersals, climate change and human inflexibility, for a given species in a given environment, available resources will limit the amount of individuals that can survive indefinitely. This is the carrying capacity. Upon reaching this threshold, individuals may find it easier to gather resources in the poorer less exploited peripheral environment than in the preferred habitat. Homo habilis could have developed some baseline behavioral flexibility prior to its expansion into the peripheries. This flexibility could then have been positively selected and amplified, leading to Homo erectus a Euro unregistered trademark adaptation to the peripheral open habitats. A new and more flexible human in population could have come back to the old niche and replaced the ancestral population. Moreover, some stepwise shrinking of the woodland and the associated reduction of human in carrying capacity in the woods around 1.8 ma, 1.2 ma, and 0.6 ma would have stressed the carrying capacity a Euro unregistered trademark as pressure for adapting to the open grounds. With Homo erectus a Euro unregistered trademark new environmental flexibility, it is likely that it saw favorable climate fluxes open it the way to the Levantine Corridor at least sporadically in the early Pleistocene. Chasing fauna, lithic analysis implies that older and huminins weren't predators. However, Homo erectus appears to have followed animal migrations to the north during wetter periods, likely as a source of scavenged food. The saber-toothed cat Megantheron was an apex predator of the early and middle Pleistocene. It went extinct in Africa c. 1.5 ma, but had already moved out through the Sinai, and is among the faunal remains of the Levantine human in sight of Yul by Dr. c. 1.4 ma. It could a Euro unregistered trademark tea break bone marrow and its kills were likely an important food source for humanins, especially in glacial periods. In colder Eurasian times, the humanin diet would have to be principally meat-based and Acheulean hunters must have competed with cats. Co-evolved zoonotic diseases, Biosf and Cohen suggest that the success of humanins within Eurasia once out of Africa is in part due to the absence of zoonotic diseases outside their original habitat. Zoonotic diseases are those that are transmitted from animals to humans. While a disease specific to humanins must keep its human host alive long enough to transmit itself, zoonotic diseases won't necessarily do so as they can complete their life cycle without humans. Still, these infections are well accustomed to human presence, having evolved alongside them. The higher an African ape's population density the better a disease fares. 55% of chimps at the Gome Reserve die of disease, most of them zoonotic. The majority of these diseases are still restricted to hot and damp African environments. Once humanins had moved out into drier and colder habitats of higher latitudes, one major limiting factor in population growth was out of the equation. Humanin biology. While Homo habilis was certainly bipedal, its long arms are indicative of an arboreal adaptation. Homo erectus had longer legs and shorter arms, revealing a transition to obligate terrestriality though it remains unclear how this change in relative leg length might have been an advantage. Sheer body size, on the other hand, seems to have allowed for better walking energy efficiency and endurance. A larger Homo erectus would also dehydrate more slowly and could thus cover greater distances before facing thermoregulatory limitations. The ability for prolonged walking at a normal pace would have been a decisive factor for effective colonization of Eurasia. Brain thermoregulation. Thermoregulation and dehydration are major problems that need to be dealt with the move into the open grasslands. In particular, vascularization of the brain is crucial in maintaining it in the narrow frame of tolerable temperatures. Bones of the higher cranium grow in response to expansion of cerebral mass, in such a way that brain tissue and blood vessels mold the inner brain case. Endocranial casts of fossil skulls allow approximating brain vascularization. Dean Falk noticed that a single large vessel, the occipital marginal sinus, was responsible for irrigating most of the brain in early Australopiths. The vessel grew smaller with time so as to be progressively replaced by a network of small veins in later hominins, starting with Homo habilis and continuing well into Eurasia. She interprets the change as an adaptation to cool the brain 
which she uses to advance her Euro irradiator Thea Euro for accelerated encephalization from Homo habilis onwards. To folk, bipedalism, which predates large brains, favored a rewiring of cerebral blood vessels into a gravity assisted irrigation network, itself allowing the cool down needed for encephalization. Endocranial casts of Homo habilis and Homo erectus differ in the organization of the frontal lobe, in particular in the frontal cortex where higher mental functions of consciousness and abstraction occur. By themselves, mental capacities have likely played a role in the success of Eurasian colonization. They would have allowed for greater social complexity, predation and sharing prey, and an overall higher quality diet. If we are to believe Bidnarik and his seafaring Indonesian Homo erectus, then the brain must have played a role in crossing channels. According to Wheeler, loss of functional body hair would have helped prevent hypothermia, since hair will obstruct airflow over the skin and restrict cooling by evaporation. He further suggests that body cooling due to hair loss has relieved a thermal constraint on brain size. However, Differences in body hair between Homo habilis and Homo erectus are impossible to test, and it will remain unclear whether hair loss was part of the human in adaptation or pre-adaptation to Eurasia. References Further reading, Anta Q. Den, Susan C. Swisher, Carl C. 3, Early Dispersals of Homo from Africa, Annual Review of Anthropology 33, 271 Euro 96, doi. 10.1146 Ann Neurivanthro. 33.0702.03.144024 Carbonal, Udald. Marina Muscara, Xosa Copyright Pedro Rodriguez, Josa Copyright Mara Burma Des de Castro, Francisc Biedrix, Jordi Rossiel, Robert Sala and Joseph Valvida, Eurasian Gates, The Earliest Human Dispersals, AA Euro of Via JSTOR. Journal of Anthropological Research 64, 195 a Euro 228 a, Keegan, Russell L., Divorcing Humanins from the Stegodona Euro a Loropida Fauna, New Views on the Antiquity of Humanins in Asia, in John G. Flegel A.L., Out of Africa I, The First Humanin Colonization of Eurasia, Vertebrate Paleobiology and Paleoanthropology Series, Dordgt, Springer, P.P.A. 111 a Euro 26, doi, 10.1007 over 978 minus 90 minus 481 minus 90 36 minus 28, ISBN a 978 90 481 9035 5, ISBN 978 90 481 Denel, Robin, The Paleolithic Settlement of Asia, Cambridge World Archaeology, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN A978-0-521-84800, ISBN 978-0-521-61310-1, Denel, Robin, Out of Africa I Current Problems and Future Prospects, in John G. Flegel A.L., Out of Africa I, the First Human in Colonization of Eurasia, Vertebrate Paleobiology and Paleoanthropology Series, Dordgt, Springer, PPA 247 a Euro 74, doi, 10.1007 over 978 minus 90 minus 481 minus 90 36 minus 215, ISBN A. 978 90 5 ISBN 978-90-481-9036-2A, Rabet, Ryan J., Human Adaptation in the Asian Paleolithic, Human in Dispersal and Behavior During the Late Quaternary, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN A978-1-107-01829-7, Zame, Yardi. Geological Evidence for the Earliest Appearance of Humanins in Indonesia, in John G. Flegel A.L., Out of Africa I, The First Human in Colonization of Eurasia, Vertebrate Paleobiology and Paleoanthropology Series, Dordgt, Springer, PPA 97 a Euro. 110, doi, 
10.10070 over 978 minus 90 minus 481 minus 90 36 minus 27, ISBN A 978-90-481-9035-5. ISBN 978-90-481-9036-2A.